Thank you very much, Michael Kurek from Poland. I don't want my Polish viewers. We do get a few from Poland, so two minute teardown, Sony gear. We do like Sony gear, because I've done a lot of fascinating teardowns over the years of Sony gear, because Sony is so huge. They're into so much stuff, like the 16 channel digital recorder and stuff like that, to the, uh, the video uh, editing stuff, and it's really remarkable. Hello, Dave's greeting from Poland. Sony Walkman, they're, yeah, they're earphone uh, you know, in-ear phones, but what the, what, you, oh, oh, sorry, I thought that was somehow a cord, no, this, they're actually quite weighty, but you're supposed to, yeah, stick the cord behind your head and then the ear things, wow, anyway, I hate earphones with the little suction cap, the suction seal on them, I absolutely despise them, I cannot wear them for like a minute, uh, bloody ridiculous, anyway, let's check it out. So Michael has sent in these, um, so I'll let you read that later, but these are basically um, waterproof. No wonder they kind of, yeah, they kind of look a bit waterproofy, don't they? And they've got the, that's why they have the external contacts like that. That's a waterproof uh, penetrator interface. So apparently you can wear these things swimming or whatnot. And I guess it, <laughs> that's probably one area where you'd want to plug your ears up, I guess, um, when you're swimming. But apparently these uh, eventually died. But you can get six, seven hours operational use out of these things on a full charge. So that's, you know, it's pretty decent. Bluetoothy pairing. And then it's got a matching little uh, USB chargery thing. Presumably you just slide that in there. Oh, isn't that jazzy? Somebody was thinking, oh, rather like that design. It's quite nice. Look at the depth on those contacts. That's that's actually looks like it'd be a really nice rugged long-term solution. Wow, for charging, I, I think that's terrific. I'm liking that. And you've got a matching little um, <laughs> waterproof thing. Where do you stick that? Do you like whack it on your finger like that when you're swimming, and you could do that? What else would you stick it on? Hmm. Now, given that there's uh, no, absolutely no charging on this at all, unless it's some sort of inductive thing, I doubt it. I think it's probably just a single, oh no, there we go. Oh, you d okay, it's designed to be replaced. Ah, oh, metal threaded inserts, that's actually really very nice. CR 1620, little thin bugger. And, well, geez, that's a great O-ring solution on there. Really liking that. There we go, got our little tactile domes on there. And that's pretty neat. And we're in like Flynn. What chipset is that? Oops, upside down, all the electrons are gonna fall out. Murata, really? Uh, that's interesting. Anyway, it looks like we have a, like a programming debug header on this side. Probably some regulation happening here. That's the Murata job. Wow, I didn't know like Murata you think uh, components. You don't think any sort of uh, you know, Bluetoothy type connection interface. Well, that's interesting. Look on the side of that. We've got a port down in there. There's like a mesh. You can just see that, I think. Just a rear port on that element there. That's got to be waterproof. Okay, well, that was just a plastic uh, snap off there for the outer. And it looks like we have an interesting seal around the inner part. This is the non charging side. So let's, I'll see if I can prize that out. There you go, that's interesting. That was a real solid seal in there. I had a, like a hard time actually prizing that out, but it does actually come out and we can get the innards hand soldered. Thank you very much. Onto flat, flat flex. And there's our little battery. So we've got a battery per side. So obviously going to the cable between them because uh, this one doesn't have the uh, contacts. So we're going to have the wires coming over, yep can see the multi core down in there it's actually quite a lot coming over wow look at that but yep what we have is just a big ass uh, lithium polymer battery looks like they might have some protection in there as well nice work sony but it's all happening in that little jobby there which i don't know can we <laughs> can we steal a part number off that does it matter i don't think so anyway that's it I mean, just on a flat flex. It's just a headphone driver. The analog signal would be uh, coming over from over the uh, headband. And the other side, we have exactly the same 
solution. So we have the outer case, which uh, would <laughs> form the first barrier, not 100%. But then the second one, and that just uh, holds in the like the tactile buttons along the top there. They've got their own ceiling. And then we've got this interesting like plug arrangement. There we go. We've got a flat flex cable going onto a PCB. A two PCB solution in this case, because we've got to have the receiver in here and all your decoding goodness. And is that all that evidence of water ingress, perhaps? Because, uh, yeah, apparently this died after several years of use, so I think it eventually seeped in. I'm actually quite impressed by that fit-to-envelope design. There's not enough... There's not much uh, left over. I've got double-sided load on that top board. Thank you very much. And the bottom board, that'd be your memory, would it? And that'd be your uh, applications processor, presumably. Because you've got to have all your memory in there. I don't think it's a stream thing, is it? I think, uh, do you download it? I don't know. I... <clears throat> okay, so this is interesting. They went for the uh, flat flex connector there going over to the buttons. That's the, that's the front panel board for those buttons there. Oh, yeah, we can get that out. There you go. But then, over on this board, they've got, you can see, no connector over here. That is an integrated rigid flex solution. So they've uh, manufactured that board as a rigid PCB, plus the flex in the middle, so you can do away with the connector, because obviously, you know, you haven't got much room left over, volume in here, to put your connector, so it's better. Um, it's like more expensive from a PCB manufacturing point of view to get that done, but you could argue it might even be cheaper in volume if you get rid of the connector, blah, blah, blah. You uh, get rid of a, an extra failure point, an extra assembly uh, step. You know, somebody's got to put that ribbon cable in correctly and then uh, fold down the bar on top of there. And, you know, it all just takes time. So why they didn't do it as one big hit, I'm not quite sure. Sure, the design engineers, they, oh, yeah, look at that, and that, but imagine if that came as one big, like, four-board solution. So this one over here, we've got some extra buttons, do we? This button board, and if that was an integrated rigid flex solution in there, and then that obviously went over to there. Oh, look, they've got a flex going from that solder point over to there. They needed a low, in, uh, they needed a low impedance path. They need a lot of copper to connect that over to there, so they had to put in the extra flat flex. Is that a uh, as a big like a, it's a mod wire, basically, to give extra current? What they couldn't get it on the inner layer of the PCB. Hmm. Wow. As it turns out, I I had to break that out of there because these contacts down in here. Look at this. They're potted. Yeah, that's a really. It's not quite hard but it, that is a rigid potting and then just solder post go through and they actually solder that after they get that in so that's that's really interesting there you go they solder that i had to break those connections off on the bottom of that board oh we've got another board on the bottom there you go so that that's interesting anyway that's how you do penetration they're, they're called penetrators when they go through the case like that. And there's an art to doing penetrators and, and something like that. Uh, like, yeah, you'll get, you know, a few metres water resistance. You, you know, you're not going to go diving with this thing or something. Oh, you probably could. You know, you might get 10 metres or something like that. Rating, not sure what the rating is for this one. Anyway, it's interesting that they decided to then solder those on there. Because when you solder them onto the PCB, someone's got to hand solder that. That's gonna, just going to heat up your potting in there, so whether or not that would that would cause an issue, I don't know. So, anyway, I find that an interesting choice. Yeah, off the bat, I wouldn't have chosen that. I would have had, like, some sort of, like, a, a pogo pin arrangement or something like that, pushing against the board, perhaps, but it's not going to be as robust. So, it's all a trade-off. I'm sure they knew what they were doing. I'm sure a lot of uh, design review meetings uh, were had. Anyway, there's the back of our... Back of our little speaker down in there. It's just gunked in place. Wow, this actually has a lot more in it than we first thought. I don't know what that is. Fiddlex. <laughs> I don't know what a fiddlex is, but I'll look that up and uh, put the info there. And then what do we got here? Don't recognise that either. So that looks like it could be. That's got to be. Uh, it's got to be your memory. And then so that's on. So your memory's just on the one board. 
because they couldn't fit it down on this main board here. That's interesting, but on the reverse side of this, you've got more. As I said, you've got some sort of bare die flip chip down under there, and that, which I thought was memory. Aha, that's a free scale. That's our applications processor, is it? Fascinating, there's a lot more in there. Well, there's a fair bit more than I expected, and the engineering that's gone into that it's really uh, quite nice, and I love the, like, they, they have done the penetrators really well. Not so sure about this uh, top solution, not entirely sure how that's supposed to work, because it, it is plastic on the bottom, then they've got a green, which is not even rubbery, it's just kind of like a plastic cap, really. So, look, they look like tracers. What the, what? What's going on there? Oh, that's an antenna! Is that an antenna? That's an antenna. There you go. They've integrated the antenna on the plastic. Oh, isn't that nice? Wow, didn't notice that. That's neat. Oh, <laughs> well done, Sony. But of course, the other cap actually uh, doesn't have that. Of course, they don't need that. But yeah, I just find that. I, I don't know how that plastic cap was supposed to be waterproof. That, whereas, you know, the beautiful O-ring solution on that. That was just fantastic, but yeah, not sure about the uh, the headphones, but still, you know, I'm sure they've done their homework on that. As I said, there would have been many design review meetings and lots of uh, uh, chamber tests and uh, things like that to um, uh, pressure tests, because I used to, um, uh, we used to have like pressure tanks. I used to do pressure testing in like gigantic vats um, that, you know, could go up to like 200 bar or something. I can't remember, but yeah, I think it was 200 bar. Anyway, yeah, it was just ridiculous sort of uh, pressures and you'd test them in the big pressure pot. Uh, we, we would often uh, actually production uh, test hundreds of units at a time in a big pressure pot. But yeah, I'm sure they don't uh, production test these. It would have been uh, designed into the engineering that it's waterproof and then and maybe, I don't know, spot checked them over time. But anyway, so yeah, water path is into the sides, of course. Like, you know, the, the penetrator's fine. It's, <laughs> there's no problem there whatsoever. Your water's not going to get through your penetrator. But, uh, and uh, probably through this cable. I'm not sure, like, they've got a rig, big rubber. I forgot to show that. Big rubber penetrator inside there, even though this is rigid plastic on the outside. You'd have to... Is that all integrated? I don't know. But yeah, I'm sure they've got... A really nice solution in there for the penetrator of the cable but anyway so you've got to get the water through this outer so imagine that's sitting on the back there the water's got to get in this edge it's got to get up through here and granted these are just clipped on I was able to get the knife in there and just pop those off um, it does kind of I, I think they've probably got a good enough seal on the tactile domes in there I don't think you get any penetration through there. I think the penetration is going to come up the side and then over. And then, of course, you've got your protective cap. This one goes in there like that, which, once again, is just a... You can see the clips. It's just a clip fit on there. And this looks like... The green stuff looks like a rubber solution. Like, it looks like a rubber O-ring solution. But it's it just the way it, it doesn't sort of like bulge out towards the edges of the case. So I don't see that working as an O-ring. And it, it's just plastic. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not like a green rubber or anything like that. I'm sure they've done their homework, as I said, but geez, I find coming from a, a marine electronics background where water ingress was, you know, the thing. Look at that. You can see that there's this sort of like sharp ridge molded into there like that by the looks of it, it pushes to, if it was going to push down if the green was like a a rubber which it doesn't seem to be like an o-ring it doesn't put it's not pushing down the correct way and as i said it's not protruding enough to do that so maybe when it goes like in i i just don't get it i just i i really i like it has something to do with that but that's just like a step. Oh, I don't know. I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling it. <laughs> if anyone's got any better idea um, of how that's actually working, please leave it in the comments. I don't know how they've gotten away with that, but 
presumably they have in most cases maybe not in this one you know you get a bit of flex in your plastic and stuff like that you get the extra water path coming in you get a bit of contamination in the factory when they're putting uh this on for example it only takes you know someone's little hair in there from the factory or whatever to ruin that ruin that seal so yeah you'd want to be careful but i don't know has anyone else um, had one of these Sony things and had it failed due to water ingress? Did they goof that up? I can't believe that they would have goofed it up. I'm sure it's adequately engineered and tested, but anyway, very interesting. Hmm, of course, they didn't decide to uh, pot the thing. They could have done that. You could could have gotten away with your plastic solution if you just filled all that in at the production stage, just filled it all up with a, you know, as some sort of flex or other uh, potting compound or whatever um of course that would have given it some extra weight of course anyway the thing's already like reasonably heavy because it's got batteries inside there and whatnot and all the plastic and all the other stuff that goes into that so there you go i cut this one away these look to be two identical penetrators so there's a there's this top cover that goes over that that really doesn't do much at all but then there's a, a plastic in here then there's another once you cut that away then there's an inner plastic, which then that would be sort of uh, potted, glued, whatever, onto the uh, PVC cable. And then they've got what looks like at least one little O-ring. Yeah, you can see a slot there in the... That looks like some... That's probably like Teflon or uh, Delrin, something like that. So, yeah, probably some sort of delrin -y. Polly put the kettle on material and they've got a nice little o-ring inside that yeah it looks like what they do is all this black plastic around here of course is part of the outer case molding and then they shove the uh wire through this uh delrin type material would already be sealed and uh, glued onto the cable then they'd slide that in the wires had come through they'd pull it through and then they put a little circlip on there to hold that in place so it doesn't fall out while they uh, cable manage and terminate the wires so they've got an o-ring seal on that penetrator that's really nice i like that quite a few people over the years have asked me how to do uh, like uh, underwater design underwater stuff and things like that and there is uh, like an art to o-rings and, and the amount of compression uh you can put on them and really no o-rings going to do jack all in any serious situation and they unless they're properly uh lubed up with the correct type of and correct type and correct amount of uh, lubricant you've got to have the correct pressure on the o-rings and all sorts of stuff and um yeah we used to do uh gas testing uh we'd have i uh, we filled them with was argon or some so i can't remember exactly but we'd fill the products with a gas and then we'd go around with a um sniffer uh pro under uh, pressure to try and uh see if they were like sniff for any uh leaks and stuff like that so Anyway, of course, you wouldn't go to this uh, sort of effort in a consumer product like this. You'd just design it and test it at the design stage. And then, of course, you just mass produce it. And as I said, you might periodically, uh, you know, test that your uh, that your moldings are still OK and things like that. But you certainly wouldn't uh, factory test each one of these little uh, low cost uh, consumer products as opposed to a, like a you know a ten or a hundred thousand dollar underwater sonar or something like that you've got to take it a lot more seriously that is uh, actually uh, quite well engineered even if uh, water i think did eventually get into these and kill them but nice sony bit of kit and of course sony do their rigid flex things like there's no tomorrow you know that's that's one of their things they've been doing that since the 80s so yeah they probably pioneered a lot of that sort of stuff in the uh, consumer space but anyway that's beauty thanks <laughs>